Take your little icebox seat. Um, we are, I'm sure as you guys know, we are three weeks deep in our series on real people, real people's religion. A bit of a bit of a delve into Pentecostalism. So Gordon, she's a Christian psychologist. I think she started off as like a youth uh, therapist. She became a family therapist and now she's a Fortune 500 a big high up coach to all these famous people but she uses principles that she's discovered through psychology and also from her faith to help people the basic of her kind of stuff that she does with people is this this very basic thought she thinks that what you think is important because it impacts the way you feel what you feel is important because it impacts the way you behave super basic right you're thinking produces your feelings, produces your behavior. She says that behavior is pretty hard to change. I think, I don't know, if ever you've tried to carb cycle, anyone here foolish enough to try carb cycle? Just me, that's pretty hard to keep up. There are some behaviors that are very difficult to maintain. They're not impossible. We can change our behavior. We can change our behavior. We've probably all done that. But it is difficult for us to change our behavior. The thing that Dr. Karen, what a name at this time of history, thinks is almost <laughs> impossible is to change your feelings. She actually believes that changing your feelings is nigh on impossible for a regular human being. What she thinks is really easy to change though is your thinking or the easiest thing to change. And she thinks that's a good way to think about it because if you can change your thinkings then the rest of that stuff will follow now the the, the catch here is we know what behavior is because we see our behaviors every day you can't really hide your behavior over a length of time right the thing that is is a little bit of a trick a little bit of a tricky question here is what is the difference between your thoughts and your feelings anyone want to take a stab anyone at all I know, it's, a bit, it's hard. If you've got an idea, give it to me, give it to me. Oh, yes, Margot. I feel like I have less control over my feelings. Hmm. They occur and surprise me, whereas I think I can have more control over my thoughts. Yes, yes. So? I think that is perfect. Actually, do you know what? I was like... A a thinking is a concept or idea in my mind and a feeling is in my body or something. Yeah, you know, you know when you actually have to think about it, it's quite difficult to, and you are very onto something. What Dr. Karen proposes is that for most of us, we, we actually don't talk about this distinctive very well, so we don't actually know what we're trying to change. Her very basic way to understand thinking and feeling is this, so simple, I think this might help us in our lives, just with the pure simplicity of it, that a feeling is usually one word. Uh, happy, sad, anxiety, excited, euphoric, one word. But a thought is usually a phrase, or you know, about five words, give or take. I think that I like you, it's a thought. I think that this is a stage, you know, like... It's, uh, it's just the, the number of words. So here's a, here's a test for us. If I were to say, I feel like I could preach better this morning. Am I, do I feel that or do I think that? I think it. And here's where it gets complicated for us. That is a thought, but I framed it up like a feeling. And, and it's really hard to, like if you were like, that's not true, Rianne. Well, you, you can't actually change someone's feelings, can you? But you can help them change their thoughts. Isn't this an interesting concept? Here's where it gets more interesting, family, because of the way we think about it. Thinking is something that God asks us to change. Throughout the Bible, you can do a deep dive into this yourself. It's a, it's a great thing to look up. What does God say about our minds? How does he think about the plasticity of our minds? Well, off the top of my head, I would always think of Romans 12 too, right? Where God asks us 
Be transformed by renewing your mind is what he asks us, maybe tells us. To be transformed by renewing our mind. God thinks there's something very important about changing our mind. He thinks we can do it through the power of the Holy Spirit, but he thinks it's just a really good jump off point, yeah? This is what I think is really cool. I never thought of before until I heard this lady's definition of feelings. Have you ever noticed that the fruit of the Spirit are one word? Love, joy, peace, patience? Have you ever thought, <laughs> I hadn't, that the fruit of the Spirit, as much as they are, you know, love is an act of our will, but I don't know if you've felt love. Because I have. Love is every bit as much a feeling as it is a thought. And it is something that the Holy Spirit produces in our lives. He produces emotions that are in line with the mind of Christ. Peace. If you've felt peace, man, it's way cooler to feel peace than it is to think peace, don't you think? It is way cooler to feel joy. If you felt the joy that only God can give, that feeling, that trumps just thinking joy. Yeah? Even patience. I was thinking about patience because it's like, I don't, I don't know if I have a feeling that feeling of patience, like I'm trying to play the devil's advocate to myself. I don't know if I, you know, like I felt patience before. You know what occurred to me? So maybe I don't 100% know how to feel patience, but I know what it feels like to be impatient. I don't know what it feels like to be kind, but I know what it feels like to be mean or when someone's been mean to me. These things, yes, they are part of your rationality, but they are also part of your emotions. And we are lucky enough to be part of an understanding of God, a way of thinking about God that doesn't just want you to think and change. The Holy Spirit wants to move in our mind and produce emotions and feelings and affectations that glorify Christ himself. There is a doctor. His name is Professor David Ekman. He talks about this. He's got a great Quote, he says, evangelical Christians, he's an evangelical, so he's talking about his own denomination, but I think it's quite fair to just say Christians. Let's just say Christians. Christians, the Christian approach to emotions may be the weakest part of our system of spirituality, according to Dr. David. He says, one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit is to mold the human ability to have emotion into an instrument for the display of Christ's character. Isn't that cool and crazy that God would believe that we can have the mind of Christ? We can think the way that Jesus thinks. And in so doing, we can show who Jesus is through our emotions because they're in line with the right way of thinking. It makes sense then, of course, that we would behave different, doesn't it? If we are thinking right and we are feeling right, then we'll probably act right. Don't you reckon? That's good. That's good. Two people are with me. Here's the thing. Thinking, feeling, and experience are important to our way of following Jesus. Thinking, feeling, and experience are important to our way of following Jesus. And uh, on this next one, you'll see, I think, that the process of thinking, feeling, and behaving on repeat, if we do that like Jesus, if we do it right, that is our testimony. It kind of is that simple. If you encounter Jesus, he shapes a little bit of how you think, even just a little bit you start to feel in line with what you think and then you act on it, you behave like that, it affects your experience of life. That is a testimony, but you do that on repeat. Well, and that's a story. That is a story of transformation. You do that little process on repeat your whole life, you will probably turn out to be someone that you should not have been left to your own devices without the work of the Holy Spirit in you and that is a story that is our testimony that is our song that is what 
gives, lifts Christ up, lifts up Jesus, lets people see Jesus who, you know, without you even having to talk about him necessarily, that is the Holy Spirit at work and his followers. So this is the process, how we think about, it's on my next screen, sorry. I'm like, have you noticed I either have like no, no PowerPoint or I go in. There's a million. So today there's a million, fam. Hopefully to keep me to time. Um, so on our next slide, it just talks about how we... Sorry, it's a black one, Amy. My bad. How we think about, learn, and come to know God, that thinking thing, impacts how we... It will show in our emotions. It will show in our feelings, and it will shape our experience of life. We do that on repeat. That's a, that's a whole story. That's our testimony. Just a really quick example from a few of our heavy hitters in the Bible, thinking of Abram, right? Abram doesn't know God at all. Not really. Maybe he has a, a vague idea of creator God. God turns up and talks to him, gives him a promise. It changes the way he thinks. We assume, I think it's fair to assume, that it would actually have made him feel some type of way because he went away and acted on what he had learned. When he acted on it, he just simply, God told him to go. He felt like God had, okay, you know, like I'm feeling some type of way. I'll go. He goes. He ends up sometime later in Egypt. I think this is kind of cool. He, in Egypt, he's just trying to survive. He has no framework for what is proper Christian character. He's trying to survive. And, and the, God is important to him, but he doesn't know how to be like him yet or please him yet. So he gives his wife away so he can stay, you know, the king's got his wife so that Moses can stay alive. And that's what Moses is up to. And then God doesn't even intervene to Moses. He goes and talks to the king. He tells the king, this is, this is not the way to do it. The, the king goes and says, hey, your God turned up and your God told me that this situation is no good. Gets Abram feeling some type of way. We might call it conviction these days. He goes, picks up his wife and he gets out of there. He changes the way he behaves, even by like 1%. Then he goes out. The next time we hear about Abram in the, in the Bible story, he's having family drama. He tries to resolve it as best he can, and then God turns up in that situation, talks to him, and he gets him feeling some type of way because from that moment on, Abraham begins to worship God different. He makes an altar for the first time. He starts to commune and worship God differently. Can you see this pattern on repeat? If you think about it, I think you might see this pattern on repeat in your life. God intervenes in your life. He changes something in the way that you think. He shows himself to you. It produces through the work of the Holy Spirit a, a particular feeling or a particular affectation, if you will, that changes the way you behave. That is a testimony. That is a testimony to the power of God. And if you put that on repeat, you'll probably find yourself here today. You have a testimony. We have a testimony. Another one is like Moses, right? Moses is like, he kind of already has this vague idea of God, but he had a crazy childhood, you know. He was going to get killed, so his mum had to give him away, and then he got raised outside of his culture, but he knows a little bit about his religion and culture. He knows enough about it that he feels passionate about it. He doesn't really know how to follow that religion and culture, so he ends up killing someone over it, running away over it, yeah? Then he finds himself in the desert. God shows up in a burning bush, and it alters the way he thinks about God. It gets him feeling some type of way. Kind of, I, I imagine a little bit what, how Brad was talking about earlier. He, he, he doesn't feel like, oh, God chose me. I'm the, I'm the one. I'll, I'll go out now and save the world. He feels like, well, God is asking me to act, and I'm so not that guy. The way that God revealing himself to Moses in that moment makes Moses feel is like, like a little bit worthless, like a little bit like unable to up to the task, you know? And then God argues with Moses for quite some time. If you read your Bible, you'll actually see that God gets really angry with Moses because he's so good at arguing. But over the course of their conversation, what God puts into Moses' mind eventually begins to change the way he feels. And when he changes the way he feels, then he goes out and acts on it. And he does that on repeat. 
for his whole life. And he becomes possibly one of the greatest leaders the world has ever known. So really quickly, as our takeaway, back to the sermon, uh, the parable of the sower. Because what happens if you take out just one, one part of this process? I think it affects our testimony. It affects our story. It makes us think, oh, I, I don't really have anything to say. You know, like, I don't know who, if my testimony is as good as your testimony. So here's the thing. The parable of the sower, right? The, the first part is the, the sower goes out to sow. He throws the seed, and the seed falls on the path, and the birds take it. Jesus goes on to explain that this is what happens. If you, if you encounter God or hear the word, but you don't understand it, then Satan will steal it from you. If we can't think, learn to think, in the way that God is trying to show us, then Satan will steal that from us without us even having a chance. So understanding, according to this parable, is pretty important. Now, we do believe that the Holy Spirit reveals himself and he can help you to understand stuff that is you know, not even in your field of view previously. But there is also somehow in a relationship an expectation on us to figure out how to understand stuff as well, right? That's why we study our Bible. That's why we pray. That's why we actually, that's why Christian community is important because we're meant to be egging each other on in this stuff, helping each other understand stuff that is too difficult for just one. Understanding, yeah, it's the work of the Holy Spirit, but yeah, it's kind of our job as well. Understanding is important. The Bible seems to think that how we think is really important. The next part of the parable, the sower throws out seed and it lands on rocky ground, right? It springs up, it grows fast, but it doesn't have a very good root. So when the sun comes out, it dies. It doesn't last too long. Here's the thing. When Jesus explains this, he says, that is when someone understands what I'm saying and they receive it with joy. So they're thinking, they feel right, but the behavior doesn't change enough for that testimony to finish and that testimony to go on repeat, for that story to last. So it kind of seems like Jesus thinks how we think about his message is important and how we behave about it is important. Here's this really cool thing. that The, the third part, the sower sows seed, he throws it, it lands among thorns and the, the weeds choke it so that it becomes unfruitful. This is very interesting. In the literal translation, one of the words that the thorns are is anxiety. The anxiety of this age and the deceitfulness of wealth are one, some of the things that choke out the seed. And they choke it out, not so that it dies, but so it's unfruitful. Isn't it interesting that anxiety, we know, one word, it's a feeling word. It's representative of many feeling words. And that sometimes, if our thoughts and our feelings don't align in a way that honors the mind of Christ in us, that the thinking and the feeling that we have just naturally, that society gives us, that we are born with, that these things can coexist in such a way, not that we die, not that our seed, not that our faith dies, but that our faith is unfruitful. Yeah. Thinking, feeling, experience. Very simple way that we can just focus on following Jesus in a way that produces fruit. We know the sower throws a fourth kind of seed and it lands on good, good ground. Good ground that produces a harvest that is 30, 60, 100 times what was sown. When I look at that process of Abram's life, that Thinking, feeling, behaving on repeat. Thinking, feeling, behaving on repeat. I feel like that is like a hundred X. That that word of God, that initial promise of God, fell on ground that produced a hundred times what it should have done. And all he did was understand, 
align his feelings with the truth of the thought that God was giving him, behave on it, and do it again. I think we are most certainly at a time in history when the world is in need of seed that 30Xs, 60Xs, 100Xs, the world, people that we know, real people, are looking for stories, are looking for life that is not as it should have been without this process of testimony, without this process of thinking what God, believing, understanding what God is telling us, allowing the Holy Spirit to produce the feelings that are in line with that, and then allowing the Holy Spirit to, well, partnering with the Holy Spirit, right, to behave in line with the thinking and the feeling on repeat. We are at a time in history when you and I, this is, that's our job. And that's kind of cool because I think one thing that I like about the embassy is we, we really like a good story. We even like a pretty stink story, actually. We just like stories. We like each other's stories. We like knowing what God is doing in one another's life. And we like being able to encourage that, to cheer each other on, to be a part of that, however we may. And I think that, man, if we could embrace that and get even better at this imagine what your story could do and not just your big ten dollar story like your big story of your whole life but also the story of this week it doesn't have to be a, a great outcome for it to demonstrate this thing of i'm thinking what god tells me is true it's producing a feeling or not sometimes but i'm i'm keeping on it and then I'm going to start behaving on it. I think sometimes when we get our real with each other and we talk about the stuff, that is how we see God. Dr. David Perry, on our first week, he, he said that our testimonies, we believe as Pentecostals, our testimonies are important because we believe they show something about who God really is. Your testimony is important. And the first thing that we can do to change the way we think is to stop thinking that it isn't. In a minute, I'm, I'm going to pray for all of us that as we, we leave here, God would just refresh to us. He would, we would understand and we would attach to this thought that our testimony, every part of our testimony is important because it's telling the story of who God is to our time and our day. And it's our job. To be that 30x, that 60x, that 100x little seeds that are sown into our lives. It's our calling. There is a Native American proverb that I think is really cool. I think it might be about you. It says this, tell me the facts and I'll learn. Tell me the truth and I'll believe. But tell me a story and it will live in my heart forever. You are the story that will allow Jesus to live in somebody's heart for you.